Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of DK Tour Fishing. Today, in this episode, I want to take you guys along with me. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a voiceover, actually, on some footage I had. If you guys seen my last video, in the introduction, I had explained that I was home fishing on Long Island for two days. And in my last video, you see me. I go out there on a lake, dial in the fish with my electronics using my 360 and my 2D sonar. You know, finding isolated grass clumps, patches, grass lines, and running a pattern offshore. Now... The second day, which we're about to catch up on right now of fishing, um, I ended up at a lake, um, at a pond that I haven't been to in a couple of years. It just so happens that I guess invasive species really took over this pond. The water level's real low, uh, algae bloom, so it's like toxic green. I'm trying to figure out how to catch these fish, how to dial in these fish on a lake that is a complete sponge. So. My electronics, they do absolutely nothing but tell me the water temperature in this situation. So, um, complete contrast from the last video, which was the day before this footage here. Come on along with me, guys. All right, so pulling up to this lake, I'm just like so confused. I'm, I'm wondering where the water column is. It's a sponge of grass. Starting with a wacky worm here, you know, just to see what's going on on the bank. Realizing that I'm fishing here in about three inches of water my trolling motor scraping right now so uh, yeah no water on the bank whatsoever I'm sure there's a couple scrappers up there but nothing that's gonna put a big bag in the boat yep found one right there in a couple inches of water getting the day started come on baby get up that baby on the board. Nice. Ooh, this guy's got a spinal problem. Sorry, buddy. Wish I had a better meal to give you. He choked the Sanko. The water's extremely low. So continuing to beat the bank a little bit here, uh, you know, I, I gave it a shot. I put some more time in than you guys could tell. I'm over it though. Not how I want to catch fish. Turn my boat out towards deeper water. I mentally, I remember from history that there are some holes out here. This whole lake is a subsurface mat. There are some areas where the vegetation comes through the surface to form some mats. I can't even find eight inches of water to run my bait through right now. So that's my goal. I'm looking for some water column to fish through. I've seen some birds working some bait out towards the center, and I am following my gut. Just like that. Now I'm running my spinner bait through about three inches of open water. I'm about to get clocked right now. I thought I was ready for this. Apparently I wasn't. I should have had my rod way up at 12 o'clock. Ooh! Yeah. Come on, I want more of that. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, man. Why? All right, guys, there's like a really low water level. The water's toxic green. The lake is matted. I mean, literally barely enough room to run a lure through. It's all a mat. It's all a sponge. It's all grass. It's crazy. I think I figured something out, though. Every moment on the water, every cast you take, it is all a collective learning experience. I had learned from that last fish with that last bite what I had done wrong, and now I'm ready to capitalize on my next opportunity. Oh my God, that's even bigger. That's even bigger. No, they want to dig right into the grass. I don't want to lose this one. Dude, this is crazy. Get out of there, man. Get out of there. Get out of there. Holy moly, this is crazy. This is crazy. How big was the other one if this one is this big? Ay ay ay. You're coming in, Slapjaw. You're coming in. Oh my god. Oh, wow. This is crazy. That's a big fish. Oh, wow. I have some explaining to do, guys. I just gotta catch my breath first. Biggin, guys. 
biggin'. Yes, sir. All right. Now, like I said, I have a little bit of explaining to do. I haven't been to this lake in like two years, guys. I was on the bank. There's no water on the bank. There's an allergy bloom here. It doesn't look like a healthy ecosystem like it used to be. There's grass blotches that are coming up subsurface to about two inches before the surface. So that first fish, he dug right into a giant mat, a subsurface mat, and he got himself off the hook. Um, the second one, he felt just as big, if not bigger. You guys just seen that one, uh, like a five pounder. God. All right, so I'm not going to lie, guys. I am genuinely perplexed right now. I had just casted the hell out of my spinnerbait. I cannot find any open water in the water column. It's time to recalculate this whole thing, reconfigure this whole thing, picking up a buzz bait. This is my number one confidence lure, period, especially with subsurface grass. All right, so I got to the pond a little late today. You know, I'm about to fish through the nighttime, actually, to get my session in. You guys aren't going to be with me the whole time, but I'm going to show you some of my catches. I want you to pay attention. This trailer hook thing on the buzzbait is a huge deal right now. I mean, this is a pure reaction bite I'm drawing, and look at this. High boosted trailer hook for the win. You guys are going to see my buzzbait land, a fish reacts and misses the buzzbait. Reaction oh, strike, oh. pure reaction strike. Now, this is the classic one-two punch, guys. This is something that took me a couple years to perfect, but I'm very good at it now. Uh, there's a ratio when it comes to buzzbait fishing. I like to believe it as 25% of uh, the fish that you come in contact with, you will hook. As for the other 75%, there's a 50% chance that you could catch them doing this. Gotcha, gotcha, buddy. That's the classic one-two punch right there. That's how we do it on Long Island. Yes, sir. Pick him up with the bus bait, shoot him down with the Sanko. Now, you're a little guy, but you definitely got me excited. You jumped like a smallmouth. Now, same scenario. Here's another one-two punch, except this time with the whopper plopper. There's a short strike right there. Yep, and I know. I have a 50% chance I'm going to catch that fish. He's still in that area. You know, he's a little dumbfounded and pretty much just trying to figure out what's going on right now. I'm about to put this worm right on his face. There he is. Yep. Now, I know a lot of people don't think it's necessarily cool to fish a Sanko, but guess what, guys? This recovery worm right here, this technique, you know, to use the Sanko as a recovery worm in this style right here, it's very intelligent and it puts fish in the boat. Now, I want you guys to understand, I threw the kitchen sink at these fish, all right? It is nighttime. I'm still getting into them on a buzz bait right now. My ratio is real good. I got like a 75% hookup ratio right now. Figured out exactly how to catch them. Uh, there's a little bit of a science to it. There's another fish on a buzz bait right here. And there's another one. I'm going to share with you guys exactly how I tweaked my technique to make these fish eat. I'm going to share it with you in the outro in about 10 seconds. Wow, this is crazy, guys. Another one right on the trailer hook. I mean, this is like, don't forget a trailer hook.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, but before we go, I want to share with you guys some of the tips and techniques that I had successfully used to put fish in the boat during this video. Now, I want to come off and say, guys, this was not an easy day of fishing whatsoever. I had anticipated something completely different from when I had got there and seen this lake completely packed out with grass, low in water level, algae bloom, really unfortunate, but you know what? Bass fishing is all about on-the-fly adjustments, something that you have to get comfortable with making adjustments in the moment uh, in order to dial in fish, you know, make the adjustments to pattern fish. Uh, one thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about was the buzz bait thing, okay? Something that I'm very confident in. It's probably my most confident technique, and I've been fishing it since the very, very beginning. You know, I perfected the buzz bait technique before I perfected how to fish a Senko, pretty much. So a um, little bit with the buzz bait. I was changing buzz baits a lot at the end. I was trying to get something that the fish committed to a little bit better, something that makes the right noise, something that has the right retrieval rate. I don't want something to burn too quick. I want something that can go a little bit slower. The, re the way that I was gonna have these fish eat this buzz bait was by messing with my cadence a little bit. I got the buzz bait about three quarters to halfway back to the boat, and I would take my cadence as I was reeling and I would kill it. I would kill it only for a very, very split second before I picked the buzz bait back up again. It seemed like, well, what I had come to find out is, is that fish were following my buzz bait. You couldn't see them following it, but when I made that quick stall in my hand, in my retrieve, the um the trailer hook was getting it, it it was just it would stop right in front of their face it would get way too close to their nose and those fish were 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 smashing that trailer hook because they were scared they were they were hitting it at a reaction strike they were doing it in survival mode these fish did not want to eat guys so i had to make them eat that bait if there's one thing I can leave you guys off with that I can't stress enough, guys, please change your technique, change your presentation, change your retrieval speed, change your color, change the weight of your lure you're using, change the rate of fall, change, you know, there's so much that can be tweaked, you know what I mean, guys? So don't get stuck up on yesterday's pattern, don't get stuck up on last year's pattern. Get to the lake, evaluate what's going on, make adjustments, recalculate, reconfigure, and pattern those fish. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys soon.